I really like how is it gan we're going to be looking at the uh, budget trickster build that I have here so I'm not using any legendary uh, weapons or uh, any tier 3 mods um, I just want to say now so this is by no means an end game build this is a beginner build for you know helping you reach the higher tiers and helping you get through I think I'm only at like tier 9 now um, as you can see here but we'll we'll go through a little uh, gameplay at the end see so yeah, I just want to put that out there that this isn't you know for the end game this is to help you get there and yeah let's dive straight into it so let's open up the inventory here so we're going to be using a automatic shotgun um, the best stats here so the armor pierce is really good I would like close range damage and weapon leech weapon life leech but at the minute um, it's not really too important I uh, kind of just make sure you have a weapon that you like using uh, and as I say if if I was going for tier 3 mods and stuff and all that good stuff and the perfect rules then uh, I would definitely have something else on here but for now uh, this is perfect for me uh, so we got bleed bullets that's really important um, because that's going to be how we refresh our magazine so you need to have bleed bullets on it's only every four seconds but you know it tends to proc often enough that we, like, we have a, a big enough clip to uh, refresh our bullets and then we got bone shrapnel you can kind of go for any second mod that you want there um, and a good mod would be perpetual mobile whatever it's called uh, so that that is when if you get a kill and shot under 35% of your uh, magazine then it refreshes the whole magazine but I've been coping fine with just the bleed bullets for now uh, so I got a roll here with bone shrapnel on so I've just kept that on bone shrapnel is actually really handy because as you can see from the description there killing shots detonate the enemy's bones and turn them into shrapnel and this also inflicts bleed so this is going to help us with our uh, refreshing our magazine the other two weapons don't matter that much but I will say if you bring up your stats here and look at your average item level you can see mine here is 39 this is super important so as we're not using these it the one thing that does matter is the level so you can see in the top this is level 40 and this is level 41 this is really important because this this average item level as you can see is boosting uh, our max health and anomaly power so the high like for example if we had like let's have a look here this is level 14 so you can see my average item level is 6 Six, 36 now down from there uh, 39 and that's going to really affect our our health and anomaly power there so you need to make sure that these weapons aren't really low level and then let's go on to the gear here so you can see the stats on this one bonus firepower cooldown reduction and close range damage these are the three stats that you want to have across the board I don't have uh, these stats on all my gear right now but as I say this is a beginner build for helping you rise up the, the tiers so it's not super important but when you finally get to the end game content you want to really try and push for those rules on your armor um, because that's going to help you out the most but if we just go through do the mods here so I've got strong twist for extra firepower whilst uh, blighted rounds is active we got thirst for blood so this is super important because this is our main uh, heal basically so killing enemies with the bleed um, increases our weapon leech by 40% this is a huge bonus and if you have a uh, weapon leech on your um, weapon as well you can get up upwards of 60-70% so it's going to be a huge heal for us on the jacket we have radiation jump and bloodlust radiation jump is mainly for the elites <coughs> Um, so when we're jumping behind them with our uh, hunt the prey we're actually inflicting vulnerable which is an extra I believe it's 20% extra damage taken and then we've got bloodlust so each kill and shot is increasing our firepower it stacks up to three times and deteriorates over uh, 10 seconds uh, this is super important once again for elites uh, after the cutscenes and stuff your bonuses for like these these mods and stuff disappear so when you are faced by an elite you want to make sure that you try to at least kill like three small enemies or something before you jump in on the the big bosses and try to do that full damage because this is super important it doesn't look like much but it actually is a lot especially when you get to like level 50 and stuff this this bloodlust is 
is boosting your firepower by like I think it's like 10 to 15k every kill so it's a huge huge amount of firepower there that you can gain uh, on the trousers here we have emergency stance and personal space um, once again, as I say, you want to be getting the bonus firepower cooldown reduction close range. As you can see, I haven't got that on this one um, or, or some of the other pieces. But right now, it's not that important. Uh, this is just, you know, I'm kind of in, more interested in the mods on the the armor than than the stats right now. And as you as you play through the game, if you find something with the right rules, then by all means change it. But for right now, uh, just keep it as it is. If you've got some cool mods on there. So emergency stance, attain golem protective effect for 4 seconds whenever your health drops below 30%. This is actually bugged right now. So I assume they will fix this, but this actually procs until you die. So for example, if I drop below 30% health, this golem protective effect will stay on me regardless. There's no 4 second cooldown. Uh, it's just on there all the time. Um, personal space grants you 15% bonus to close range weapon damage. This is a really nice mod for a trickster. Um, because the build we're playing here, you're up close and personal all the time. Uh, an extra 15% bonus is going to do as wonders. Onto the hands here. Uh, so we got mitigation from death and vampiric mag. So vampiric mag, also super important. This is how we are replenishing our magazine and keeping up uh, the twisted rounds. So as you can see, if we get a kill with someone affected by bleed, it uh, replenishes 50% of our magazine. So we got the bleed bullets on here. Bone shrapnel also putting bleed out on people and then we got thirst for blood here which is increasing our weapon leech so a lot of bleed going on um, mitigation from death you can swap this out if you want and put anything you kind of like in there I personally like this this tier 2 mod uh, because it stacks up our armor 10,000 so an extra 30,000 armor there which is super super helpful um, and it helps us just keep us alive for much longer. But if, if you want to put a, a damage mod there, then by all means feel free to. And finally, on the uh, the shoes here, the boots, uh, we have additional mag and damage absorber. So the additional mag, once again, you can change this out. But for me, I like this on because right now we don't have the um, unlimited uh, ultimate bleed and bullets, which is every one second. So you're pretty much guaranteed to refill your magazine. But right now, it's, you know, it's it's just a bit bit on the the safe side having this having this additional mag so if we do run out we do have an extra magazine before triggering the cooldown which can save your life sometimes especially if you're playing in group content um, I've noticed a few times when joining people's games uh, the um, vampiric mag isn't actually triggering so this is really useful to have and then damage absorber once again, just a bit of defense there, an extra armor and resistance. We don't have to do anything to proc this, so it's super handy. Uh, let's take a look at what skills we're using. So much like most of the builds that you've seen out there probably already for the endgame stuff, we're using Venator's Knife, Twisted Rounds, and Hunt the Prey. Venator's Knife is super handy. It's going to slow down all the enemies, and the first bit of damage that we do to them is going to be double. So we're able to put a massive amount of damage uh, on our first hit here especially with the way the class tree is uh, set up we also get a huge boost to weapon damage from uh, these two skills hunt the prey um, once again we'll take a look at the class tree in a second but this is uh, super useful for getting behind the enemies um, putting slow on them so they they can't turn around straight away and putting out a massive amount of damage and then twisted rounds we want to keep this up all the time if possible if it does run off it's only got a 19.4 second cooldown um, that's because I do have some cooldown on the armor. It might be a bit more for you if you don't have the cooldown on the armor, but as I say, not not super, super important. But uh, if this does drop off, we haven't got too long to wait. You just need to be a bit more defensive. Uh, you can still kill a lot of enemies when it's not active, but um, yeah, you want to try to keep us up all the time. And class tree. So we're going into the assassin tree. Uh, we've got close range weapon damage here, arm piercing. Weapon damage, we're using a shotgun, so we're getting a shotgun master. Coming down to uh, points here, so close range weapon damage again. As I say, we're up close and personal all the time in this, this build, so really handy to have that. Uh, activating movement skills increase your armor piercing by 25%. So every time we activate Hunt the Prey, which is pretty much every 7 seconds, uh, we're going to be keeping up basically an extra 25% armor piercing all the time. Uh, 
critical damage by 20%. This is up to you whether you want to have critical damage here or the cooldown for the movement skills. It's entirely just based on what you want to do. If you do use the movement skills, you'll be able to use your Hunt the Prey so much more, which is really useful. Uh, we've got close range damage again. Come up here to activation of deception skills increases your weapon damage by 35% for 8 seconds. And if we go down, activating movement skills increases your weapon damage by 35%. So this is an extra 70% weapon damage basically all the time. Because if you look, our cooldowns are actually less than 8 seconds. So the rotation tends to be, you know, you chuck your Venator's knife, hunt the prey behind an enemy, and then boom, an extra 70% damage right there. Uh, and you can keep this up pretty much all the time. Really important to keep this up as well. You're going to be putting out masses of damage if you do. Once again, arm piercing. Uh, I prefer the arm piercing over the cooldown here. I don't feel like I need the cooldown. As you can see, we're, we're under 8 seconds, so we're able to keep this up pretty much all the time. 20% um, from attacking behind, which is really useful for Hunt the Prey, because we're going to be behind enemies most of the time. Increase your close uh, range weapon damage. Um, it's up to you. I mean, this one tends to make more sense than just the, the base weapon damage here because, as I say, we're going to be up close and personal pretty much all the time. Extra weapon damage. Uh, decrease your uh, movement skills cooldown. Once again, really handy. 20% uh, extra damage from behind. Now, this one here is super important. Increase your weapon damage against elites by 15%. So the elites are going to be the hardest enemies to take out. So this extra 15% is just super useful. Increase your magazine size, uh, awesome for a shotgun, so we get 30 bullets here, just helping us keep up that uh, twisted rounds so much more. Increase your shotgun weapon damage, and increase your weapon damage by 8% for each enemy in close range. So I believe the close range is classed as like 10 meters, and it might not sound like much, but it's actually a lot, especially on the maps where you have all the melee enemies kind of running at you and stuff this is just going to boost your damage through the roof but yeah that's pretty much it as i say we've got no legendaries going on only tier 2 mods um as i say yeah it's not not end game content this is just to help you rise up through the ranks i've seen a lot of builds out there and they're all kind of you know they've got like these legendaries and tier 3 mods and i don't have that i'm not at the point where I've been able to farm. I have other characters, but I don't have, you know, they're not good enough to be farming the tier 15s and such yet. So I just thought I'd make my own little little build. It's kind of based, there's a lot of a lot of builds out there that have these skills and this class tree and these kind of weapon mods. But yeah, this is just kind of a budget version. But yeah, let's jump into a game and see how this kind of build works and look at the rotation and stuff. But yeah, hope you enjoy. All right, just jumping into a uh, camp plant here. We're on tier nine. I'm quite under leveled for tier nine right now. I reckon my average item level is like, I think it's like 38, 39. I think it was, and the enemies are level 43. So I might struggle a little bit to be honest, but see how we get on. Just need to be careful with how we play. I'm back here. We got an elite here. There we go, it's nice. Get the knife out. Jump behind me. Oh. Somehow ran out of twisted rounds. Nightmare. That's when that additional man comes in really handy, you see, because we haven't got the uh, ultimate bleed bullets. We're not applying bleed all the time, so that can happen. Which is where that additional mag comes in handy quite a lot. go nice one let's crack on twisted 
interested rounds active. Come over here. Check you out. Got a rifle man. We got a captain right here. Get a knife on him. I can't jump behind these for some reason. I'm gonna do a little bit of damage, but I'm gonna make sure my twisted rounds doesn't run out. So let's get a couple kills. Get my knife out. Back to the captain. Oh, that's not the captain. So we only got eight bullets right here. I'm gonna be super careful. Be really careful here. Don't want to take too much damage. Take out that captain. Too many explosions. Uh, jump back over, we left the diva behind. There we go. Making good time, I reckon we'll get a silver. How about this? I don't think I'm on... Uh, gold time right now, but it's fine. i use my knife for some reason, why not? right now. Check my knife out. Let me jump behind you and take you out. Nice, there we go. Just gonna play this careful. I'm gonna get out of there. There seems to be a lot of enemies. damage off on these elites in a second. Let's get out of that. Okay. Let's uh, wait for my skills to come back here. Jump behind you. There we go. Get a bit of damage out on you. Once again. Get me knife, jump behind, 
There we go, jobs are good. I want to be careful of this guy. Jump behind. Take a step back. Nice work. Get my knife out. Jump behind. Oh, good night. Come here. Just about taking it slow, really. I'm not, as I say, I'm not going for uh, CT15 gold. This is just to help me rise up through the, the tiers here. Oh, we've got a reload here. Once again, additional mag coming in. Well, shooting the wrong guy. Super handy. Alright, good work. Call in the elevator here. Damn it. More of them. So there is a skip you can do here, I think, if you just wait by the elevator. Oh my god, my laptop's about to die though. If you could please open now, that would be amazing. Thank you. That's bloody put me laptop oh, charger in there. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> Thought I was going to die. Good timing though. Oh, I hate when the grenades and stuff land in front of the uh, the hold square button here. Alright, so we're making good time. Don't think I'll get gold. I think we're on a silver. But I think I'm like f four levels under leveled. And as I say, I'm not going for CT15 kind of gold clears or whatever. Just trying to make my way up through the ranks. Let's uh, jump behind one of you. Make quick work of that. Let's get me knife out. Jump behind Alpha and Boosh. Jobs are good. Alright, so we got. Behemoth here. Go straight behind them. Nice bit of damage out there. Once again, get my knife out. Jump behind the big cruiser. Get my knife out. Doing well. We're into silver now, but that's fine. Knife out, jump behind you. And boom. Alright, so we got the cutscene here. 
so none of my buffs from um, the tears, uh, the mods are active right now. So I'm just gonna jump behind, get off a bit of damage, dodge out of the way, get some kills, use my knife. Once I got the knife back, we'll uh, jump onto the brood matron here. Lovely bit of damage there. And I have to reload. That's all good. That's what that additional mag is there for. Jump behind. Should be able to take you out now. There we go. Awesome. 420 drop pod resources. Oh, hey. And there we go. So you can see, I mean, didn't get gold. We're a couple of minutes off, but look, we managed to push ourselves through a tier 9. Quite underleveled. And let's take a look at what we get in the drop pod. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. As I say, I just want to put out there that this isn't... Um, as I say, in-game stuff, it's just for this exact kind of thing, helping you push up through the tiers, just a build that's making it possible. And as we go along, we're going to get new gear, so hopefully we get something from this drop, but that's when we want to start levelling up our things and uh, pushing up through the tiers even further. So yeah, if you uh, like the video and you stuck around this long, then I'd really appreciate it if you uh, could hit that subscribe button. Uh, maybe even just give the video a like or leave a comment, whatever you, you feel like doing. You don't even have to do anything if you don't want to. But I'll see you in the next one. And thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. See you later.